Hi, I'm Stacy. I'm Education Program Director here at Golden. I see we've got uh, folks coming from all over the world. It's wonderful to see you here today. Uh, we are basking in the sunshine here in upstate, upstate New York. Um, it's nice to have spring finally arrive. Uh, we're going to talk about our So Flat uh, paint line, which is a flat matte leveling paint in the context of utilization with texture, which seems kind of in opposition to the paint, but there's a way to do it and maintain um, some of the characteristics that are unique to this paint. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, hi, Tom, great to see you too. <laughs> um, we will be broadcasting this both on YouTube and Facebook. Um, today, if you have any questions while I'm going, we have uh, two of our materials and application specialists um, in the chat. They'll be happy to answer your questions, and I will also pause if I see a question. I'll repeat the question so that those that watch this later on on both channels will know um, what the question is, and then do my best to answer it if uh, one of our materials specialists doesn't, doesn't get to it, or maybe I'll repeat it. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to my overhead camera. So I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time talking to you about, you know, all of the, the things to know about SoFlat. I'm just going to give you a quick introduction or reintroduction to this paint, and then we're going to get into a conversation about texture. Um, I was just in New York City a few days ago, and in the galleries that I happened to pop into, I really just started to think about all the artists using texture and how beautiful this matte paint might translate into that kind of application. And I just thought it'd be great to, to showcase that. So our So Flat paint was designed to be uh, more leveling, extremely matte, and uh, more opaque than our other paint lines. Um, when you take a look at what we've got here, you can see the camera loves it. The camera loves it because of its incredible matteness. Um, we have, a couple of sets here that the paint comes in. We have Pop, which is a primary set. It's a red, yellow, blue, uh, green, black, and white. And then a Zing set. Our Zing set we named just because it's, it's kind of what it is. We, you know, it's a color selection for your palette that adds some pop and some zing. There's some secondary colors and some unusual blends in here. And I have um, color charts for both of those right here. You can see the difference between the two. This is the Zing set on top. And you see that when I rake this across the light, there is no sheen. It is completely matte. And I was actually kind of scanning my surface here to see if I could find something to contrast um, this matteness with to show you the difference. Um, and I will, here it is. Here's a, excuse me for a second. Here's a sticker from our Williamsburg oil paint line. And you can see when I hold that sticker up, there you go. There's that gloss on the sticker. And you can see how flat the golden acrylic paint remains here, the so flat. So that's, that's pretty exciting for an artist who really wants to get that matte finish. This is the pop set, that primary set with the green, black, and white addition. Uh, they're both beautiful sets and together they make a really nice palette. Um, so the paint line actually comes in these 40 colors and they range from um, a semi-opaque to an opaque for most of the paint line with a semi-transparent only for the fluorescence. And the reason that is is because that's a dye-based paint and there's no way of getting that truly opaque. But there is increased opacity over our other paints with this. And when I've put it on with a little bit more of a heavy hand, I've gotten great coverage. It comes in three sizes. Um, it comes in this larger 16 ounce, four ounce, sorry, and a two ounce. So, if the paint is designed to level and be flat and get these beautiful crisp edges like you see on this, this color chart, um, how do we get texture? So that was a question that we, we actually posed to ourselves when we were testing this paint, and I know our material specialist did a lot of testing um, that actually was uh, fruitful. You know, they're compatible, these paints, with our other lines, so I can mix it with any of our acrylics for the most part, but what you'll find is it'll change the sheen and the, that sort of ultra matteness um, that is so desirable from this paint will change. And that's okay if you're fine with that, but in some cases you may want to keep that matte sheen. So let's talk about ways to get texture. 
and maintain the matteness or not. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll. Well, we have a lot of love for the Pop and Zing set. That is terrific. If there are any questions that uh, you have, please ask them. I'm happy to help them and I love to um, converse with you. So this is one way to get texture. You can build up the texture uh, using the other products and then paint the so flat on top of it. So this was actually a uh, light molding paste on canvas. The texture was built. Then I painted um, some so flat color, uh, some, some of the warm tones under here. And then we did another coat, because we've done used this for a few demos, of the cerulean blue. And then here is the Payne's gray. One way to get texture with so flat is to build up the surface first. Um, this is very Eve's Klein here, this, this ultramarine blue in the middle, super, super matte. But I put it over a glossy gel just to show you that you could do some of the work ahead of time. Um, so here we have um, a heavy gel gloss, a regular gel gloss. We have um, some glass bead gel and a molding paste. And then we just let that dry. You can see it's still drying. That's what these white patches are. This will clarify a bit more. But look at the difference between that glossy surface and where I put the sew flat. Really, really different. That really opens up some interesting creative potentials right there. So that's one way of getting your texture. Um, another way is you can actually mix the sew flat with some different uh, mediums. So let me show you that next. So this right here <laughs> is the So Flat Ultramarine Blue mixed with light molding paste. And this is the So Flat Cadmium Red. Let me see which color it is. Yes, the Cadmium Red Light mixed with regular gel gloss. Now, regular gel gloss is really high gloss. And with the So Flat mixture, you're going to change the sheen of the So Flat. In this case, I would say it's almost like a gloss to satin finish. So the matteness did bring down the glossiness of that gel a bit, but it's stable and it's fine. So if you're okay with that, you can get that effect. But then look at the light molding paste. The light molding paste just remains really matte. That material just absolutely um, is, a, is complementary to, as a medium for uh, so flat if you want texture. I'm gonna show you some more options here in just a minute. John says that it's, the so flat has been treating him well on a wet palette, but not to add too much water. Is that correct, John? Sounds good. All right, so here's another example of this. This is actually the so flat um, yellow green. Um, I know it's a little blurry on the screen to see the font there, but this is the yellow green. Um, and what I did here is just an experiment. This is the yellow green so flat with no medium. And then this is what the regular gel uh, looks like, the regular gel gloss, excuse me, on a so flat surface with no paint in it, just to show the glossiness of the product. So you can see that. And then this is what the mixture looks like. So if you see the mixture, it's a little, the sheen is not quite as glossy as the product on its own. But then, you know, it's still glossy. <laughs> so you can see that it takes down that matteness. It doesn't stay as matte. You are going to see that the glossiness and the matte together will create something that's in between based on the ratio of your mixture. But, you know, using a matte gel with um, the matte uh, so flat will get you a matte uh, finish but not as matte as some of the other products it will still have a bit of a of a sheen that's uh, not quite as flat as this so i'll show you um, nancy says is this basically like an acrylic gouache well so acrylic gouaches uh, companies that call their product acrylic gouache that ranges in, in many diff uh, many different viscosities and formulations um, but they basically are acrylic paints for the most part uh, this is a leveling uh, fluid acrylic paint. In just a moment, I'm going to crack open a jar and you'll see it. It's not thick. That's intended to be let out with water, although you can let it out with water. Um, this right out of the jar will lay really, really flat. Um, you can use it just like you would use what is called an acrylic gouache, um, but it's, it's an acrylic paint and 
it's unique. So anyway, we hope you try it. Um, so this is the cadmium orange over so flat ultramarine blue. This is our heavy gel matte. This is the cadmium orange on its own. And that's what these products look like right here. Heavy gel matte and then the so flat cadmium orange. And what I did is I mixed them. This is probably about 30% uh, to 40% cadmium orange. And when you look at this in the light, it's fairly matte. There's a slight, you can see right here, a slight sheen change that I don't see here. And this is a matte gel, so it will change the sheen. It's still fairly matte, but it's not dead flat like this paint. But you can get texture that way as well. It's still very matte, but there is a, there is a tiny bit of, of the sort of satiny finish from the binder of that gel. And I will show you um, some examples where when I rake the light across, there's no sheen really at all. Well, there's a sheen, it's extremely matte. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that paper there. All right. We're gonna to get to painting here in just a second, but I wanna show you a few more examples. Um, this is, upside down for me, this is the So Flat. Uh, this is the Cobalt Teal. This is our pastel ground by itself. Very gritty uh, sort of texture, almost like an emery board. And then here, those two are mixed. And you can see that that is fairly, fairly flat. I don't get much more sheen, a tiny bit, um, off of this that I would have here. Very, very flat. And the interesting part about this is I can draw on it. So I can take a pastel or a pencil and make marks, and that texture is, um, is beautiful for that. So I can create really beautiful colored grounds or work into my painting with drawing that way. Just so you know, the so flat itself is this is so flat down here as well. It also is rather matte and will accept this. It just has a different feel and a different touch than you would if you had the uh, pastel ground. Okay, another option, and this is a fun one. We're actually going to get into mixing this one. Um, this is our coarse pumice gel mixed with the nap. Napthal pink, and here you see the color on ultramarine blue. This is the coarse pumice gel, and this is the mixture dry, but I want to show you what this looks like wet so that you can see the difference. All right, so let's go ahead and play with this and get some paint moving because that's really fun. This is all about. All right, so here's the naphthal pink. Does anybody have any questions? I can see that our um, Material specialists are in there chatting with you guys. That's terrific. How stable does the backing have to be to prevent cracking on cardboard, thick paper, etc.? So um, this stuff's still pretty flexible. Um, it is great on canvas. So even our um, our gels and paste are great on canvas. So if you do these textured mixtures, you should be good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, make a mark, that's just the paint. I'm gonna take a little bit of this paint here. Let's do it on black too, so you can see how pretty that is. All right. And I'm going to make a mixture right here on my beautiful color panel. And here's the coarse pumice gel. Now this is a fun one to knife out because it really looks like sand. Now you saw I pulled the paint out. I didn't really show you the viscosity of the paint, I just kind of jumped right into the mixture. But um, based on that other question we had about um, the gouache, uh, you know, this is a different consistency than some of the products that are advertised as acrylic gouache. Also, you can see my rim's a little messy. With all acrylics, you probably want to keep that clean, although, you know, that's, a, that's one of those things. We know what to do, but sometimes we just don't do it. <laughs> Okay, so this is a coarse pumice gel. It feels like wet sand. Uh, really doesn't, sounds like wet sand. If I put that out on my palette, it behaves like wet sand. It's a great texture. It feels uh, kind of like a little bit like a stucco or a cement. You can hear what that sounds like. I hope 
that doesn't disagree with anyone. <laughs> now I'm going to take this paint and just put a little bit in there. Uh, this is an artist grade professional paint, highly pigmented. You know, we're not adding um, any unnecessary fillers to cut corners. We try to load as much pigment as we can into our paint to get the, the desired effect. Uh, so, you know, it didn't take that much paint really um, to get this to start to have color. And as I spread that out, you really get a sense of that material. Pretty cool. So that will dry like this. Now the reason I wanted to pull this out and do the mixture here is because the binder in this will clarify and your color will deepen. So just, just so you know, these colors are very similar here and here. There's not a big shift. So once this dries, it should be pretty similar to the, um, to the actual paint that you've got uh, out of the, the container if you use enough paint. So when I did this one, I want to say it was about 30 to 40% paint. Probably used a little less here. It still is going to deepen. Okay, terrific. Let me see if there's any questions before I move on to the next demo. Thank you to my team. You guys are terrific um, answering questions as we go. All right. So the next one I want to show you is light molding paste. You know, when we started that first board I showed you with the red and the blue on it, that's what this is. And what, what I have here is um, a ultramarine blue on top of a yellow ochre. And then I have um, some light molding paste just with no color added right here. Then in another demo, I put a little bit of ultramarine blue on top of that dried paste. I did a little dry brush and then I also let it down with water. Um, this material that we have here, this, this light molding paste is is, was developed because molding paste itself was quite heavy and we had artists making these massive massive textural paintings and the canvas would kind of sag because it's too heavy so we developed a product that actually weighed less so when you put this on there's a lot of air in this product and it actually does not weigh down the surface the same way um, that a molding paste might and it has a different feel if I were to stick my knife right into this it would kind of relax a little and then bounce back up. It feels spongy. And when you put it on, uh, I'm going to do a demo here in a second with your knife or your brush, it has, it feels very light, almost like um, frosting, uh, wood, like a buttercream frosting. Hi, Sherry from Sacramento. <laughs> I see that popping up on my feet. So here I've got a knifed out version and a um, brushed out version of a mixture between the ultramarine blue and the light molding paste. Now when I hold this up, you can see how matte that is. This is probably one of my favorites um, for mixing as a sort of general bodybuilder with this paint. Okay, so next I have um, a little stencil here. I'm going to knife out some light molding, light molding paste um, on this blue board right here with this yellow green. And then I'll fill that stencil just to show you how we, you know, how, how this stuff just behaves. It's pretty neat. So this is light molding paste right here. And you can see that this is really, like, it's light. I don't want to say sticky. It's just, like, fluffy. Um, it's like a cloud. <laughs> it's a little, you know, I've had buttercream frosting that was actually a little less, that was a little bit more dense than this. Um, I, but I wouldn't say it's as fluffy as, like, Cool Whip. Something in between, maybe. All those food references make you hungry, huh? <laughs> All right, so here it is. This looks like a white product. It, it is, but you know, if I pull it down really thin, you can see that it starts to become translucent. What's interesting is it, does, it doesn't quite affect the color um, that much um, when, you, when you mix and when it dries. So, you know, I find that pretty interesting about this product. Now here is the yellow green. I'm going to mix this up a tiny bit. And I'm going to take some on my knife and just drizzle it in there. And mix this up really quickly. And what I'm going to do with this mixture is just do some knifing on one side. 
I'll take a brush through it just to show you what it looks like brushed and then we'll stick some in a palette. I mean, excuse me, a, um, a palette, listen to me. We'll stick some in a stencil. <laughs> Words. Okay, there we go. Look how, look how tall I can get those peaks. Like I can really build texture with this, you know, really, and it's gonna dry matte. So I can get this really built up. That's what this is for. And we can really get those textures going. Quite beautiful. Um, you can also brush with it. And I could use a coarse, you know, coarse haired brush, like a, a bristle brush, and get that texture in there. But I have a soft brush here, but I can really even get it quite thin. And it's going to be lovely either way. And it'll adhere and it'll do all the things it's supposed to do. Um, you can do some sculptural kinds of applications with this too, like shoving it through this stencil a more dimensional application. So I'm just gonna press it through just a section here. And then I'm gonna really cake it on. <laughs> and now I'm gonna lift that stencil up. And you can see that I'm able to create some dimensional patterns that way as well. It's a really lovely way to work. All right. So last but not least, we have textural paints as well. And those are a load of fun to work with. Um, with so flat is, is another option. Um, so I can't say I discovered this all on my own, um, but this, is, this to me was pretty fun and exciting. Now these will change the color quite a bit, but if you just wanted to sort of mix it up, the really textural paints like this mica micaceous iron oxide, um, work beautifully with so flat and I maintain that texture. I increase the, um, the you know, I change the color and this is a heavy body so it's going on kind of, you know, thick but it seems like it increases the opacity a tiny bit uh, because that paint sort of fills in where we had a clear binder on some of these gritty pieces. Um, this is actually micaceous iron oxide mixed with the cobalt teal uh, so flat and the micaceous iron oxide I actually used is a um, heavy body, but it also comes in fluid. Sorry, I put that there. And then this one is coarse alumina. It's very, very coarse. And I'm going to go ahead and take the end of a brush and just show you how coarse. Very, very coarse. This is the micaceous. This is really, really gritty. And I retain that, and it's still very matte. There's a little bit of a sheen in here but it's still very, very matte. What's really wonderful about this is, you know, um, these gritty textures add creative potential and options to your work, but they also, you know, um, they're just interesting on their own as well. Now this is that mixture with micaceous iron oxide and the cobalt teal let down um, into transparent layers with our super matte medium. So when we work the actual paint extender for so flat um, when we work with it as its original you know design intention to be a, a sort of flat leveling paint we're recommending that if you want to extend that paint um, on its own you can use a little bit of water if you want but you can also add super matte medium to uh, create some sheer layers now this is let out with water at the top there's a lot more paint in there and then this was starting to tack up and I, I agitated that surface with a little super matte medium and pulled it down here and then again this is the micaceous iron oxide with the cobalt teal and because there's so much texture in that paint it actually even when let down they make beautiful drawing surfaces as well as uh, painting um, surfaces or paint options it's really really quite beautiful and uh, gets, gets my creative mind excited. So hopefully this was a good introduction for you uh, to think about how to use these ultra matte paints in uh, textural application. Um, did you say that so flats reflect more light? Well, I mean, it, it's flat. Um, so we are, we are actually not seeing light reflected. Um, if that's how you mean or intend for that question to be, an, you know, proposed. Um, so I'm going to show you that one more time. Um, grab the right board here. Sorry, guys. I probably can show you on here. Um, this is a Williamsburg, our oil paint line sticker, and you can see how glossy that is. 
Um, so that's bouncing a lot of that light off the surface and you can see how flat the sew flat is. So you can see it just absorbs all of that light. Oh, and there, look, my partner answered that question as well. So that's terrific. You can see it's just like soaking it in. There's not almost, almost no reflection um, to that surface. And this is actually a mixture with the uh, micaceous as well. So great. So I'm going to go put the camera back on me. I hope that was helpful. Um, I want everyone to just uh, feel free to reach out to us at any time at help at goldenpaints.com. Just know that we're excited to hear from you and have a wonderful day. Uh, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again soon. Thanks everybody, bye-bye.